So our topic is about uh, the grade 3 to grade 6 school or the elementary school, which is a, this is the sample of a uh, early 1900 school, which is the Gabaldon School Building. This, nakikita nyo ba? Hindi. Share, sorry. Nakikita po. Okay. Uh, so you can see the screen, right? Okay. So the Gabaldon School Building was designed by uh, uh, this is this is the what you call the Philippine Assembly form the elections of 1907 passed the Act 1801 authorized by Assemblyman Isauro Gabaldon. No, so Isauro Gabaldon is a uh, Assemblyman for of Nebaisia. It was approved and become by the known as the Gabaldon Act. No. The appropriate 1 million between 19, 1907 to 1915 for construction of schoolhouses of strong materials in barrios with guaranteed daily attendance of not less than 60 pupils. No? So, pinangalan sa kanya. But the Gabaldon uh, building was designed by William Parsons. No? So, this is the Assemblyman uh, uh, Asauro Gabaldon. And this is the Will, this is William Parsons. No? William Parsons graduated will, uh, in Yale, no, it's a, the consulting architect of the Bureau of Public Works from 1905 to 1915. Designed the school buildings that were later named after the Assemblyman Gabaldon. Okay, so so the the Gabaldon building, no school buildings like this one. The first was the standard plan one with one unit seven by nine meters in size. No, so this is the Gabaldon school, no. Uh, this is the construction cost was then 2,100 pesos only. So this is the plan number two, which was good for 100 students. No, So this is uh, one, one, two, two classrooms with one entrance. No? Uh, the, the two classrooms has a budget of 4,100 pesos. So they, they use, they, they uh, spend 4,100 pesos to build this type of school. So this is the three classroom. Uh, plan number three has three classrooms and plan number four has four classrooms. No? So this is the plan one and three. So this is the 51, 51 Gabaldon buildings was completed, were completed by 1911 and 1916. 405 more constructed, bringing total number of classrooms to 1,852. 327 of these Gabaldons were made of concrete in the Gabaldon style school, there were architectural harmony between the main building and other accessory structures. So you can see in this drawing, no, there is a main plug, plug pole and these are the main stairs going up to the Gabaldon or the Parsons uh, architecture building. So it's, it's on stilts, no? the Gabaldon uh, structure is on stilts. And this, the flooring are uh, sometimes made of wood and sometimes made of concrete. No? But the upper part of the building is made of wood. No? The upper part, the, the windows are made of wood and the trusses are made of wood and the, the roof are made of uh, uh, steel, no? steel uh, sheets. No? This is a, a, uh, a Gabaldon school no? so showing the steels. No? Uh, and this, uh, the, this is the wooden uh, sidings and this is the wooden floor. So I, I uh, there are other classes that are made of wooden floor and some are made of concrete floors. So this is a concrete floor Gabaldon school. No? You see, but the upper part are made of a uh, mix of wood and concrete. So these are the arcs no, for the Gabaldon school. No? So this is almost similar to the, fit, the first uh, slide that I've shown on the K-2 buildings. right? So, so this is a Gabaldon school also. No? You can see this is different from this one, no? but the design is all, almost similar. Okay. So this is another Gabaldon school. Okay. And a variation uh, improvement done no? to a Gabaldon school. So the details of the school plan, so you can see the floor to ground to floor is 1.6 meter, floor to ceiling is about 4.25 meters, and the ceiling to roof is 1.6 meters, so total of 7.22 meters. 
the frontage is about 32 meters and the side is about 14.2 meters. No? So as you can see, the ground to floor is about 0.6 meters. So it's it's very it's almost uh, uh, five feet. No, the from the the ground, the natural grade line to the finished floor line is about five feet. So so you can you can eventually walk underneath this Gabaldon School. I was I remember when I was still uh, uh, very young. No. And I, I usually go to the to my, our province. So there's a school beside our house. So there, and, and I usually go under the Cabaldon houses, Cabaldon school buildings. No, and I can easily walk under these uh, uh, school buildings. So this is the side elevation. Uh, this is the ground floor uh, structural plan. No? Uh, this is the sign. This is signed by uh, uh, Parsons, so William Parsons, approved by the uh, director of the uh, Bureau of uh, Education and Department of Public Instruction. Okay, so this was in 1910. No? This uh, drawing was done in 1910, December 12, 1910. So this is a, this is a, a another plan of a standard. Uh, Gabaldon House uh, building. Okay. So this is the, as you can see, this is the, the plan and this is the elevation. Okay. This is another Gabaldon building. 51 of the Gabaldons were completed in 1911. Uh, and uh, so 327 of these Gabaldons were made of concrete. This is a Gabaldon school in Kamigin, no? uh, Kamigin Island. This is another Gabaldon uh, uh, improvement. No? Yeah. Okay, these are the new new school buildings no? that are designed by the Department of Education, the depth and new school buildings. So uh, the depth and uh, regulates the uh, uh, courses or the the education in elementary in, in elementary education. So uh, the DEPED also regulates the designs of the school buildings of for elementary to grade, uh, grade twelve education. So, so Department of Education series uh, February twenty two thousand twelve guidelines of implementation of the regular school building program. So. Uh, provision of school furnitures, all school recipients of new classrooms to such be provided with school furnitures, 45 units of armchair, one set of teacher's table, and one chair, one unit of blackboard. No? The school furniture shall be accorded with the DepEd standards. So there is what you call a DepEd standards for school buildings issued by the Department of Education. Uh, construction repair of multipurpose workshop should be uh, uh, used for uh, for home economics and industrial classes, no. So there's is a there's a workshop for uh, for industrial classes and science and laboratories and toilets. Uh, there's also provision for potable water, uh, and there should be a repair for water facilities, installation of electrical wiring or general wiring, provision of classrooms for indigenous peoples, and provision of classroom for resettlement areas with suitable school sites. So the standards for school building design are as follows. No? The design is about is the con conventional design seven by nine, similar to the sizes of school buildings designed by uh, William Parsons. No? The classroom design shall be, a, the seven by nine classroom dimension shall be adapted for all public elementary and secondary schools. No? So this is also applicable for high school. So the design stability, suitability for actual site conditions will be considered in the financiation of plan specification or allocation per school. The design should be typhoon resistant school buildings may be constructed in typhoon flood, flood prone areas. Indigenous building design may be adapted in far flung areas. So the, the school building should also adapt with the culture of the uh, community. So except, except for a multi-story construction which can be programmed as a partial construction, but must be usable functional due to limited budget. All single-story classroom construction must be the, must have the following features of the complete school building. So these are the specifications. No? Uh, cemented flooring, smooth wall finish for 
for the walls, painted walls, ceiling and roofing, full cathedral type ceiling, so the high, there should be a high ceiling, a complete set of windows, two entrances with doors, no? uh, two entrances with doors, no? so, so this, this is in compliance with the fire code, complete electrical wires and fixtures for areas with electrical facilities, roofing for weather protection, and chalkboards. So this is the typical uh, design no? uh, of a, a school building issued by the, the, the public works, uh, the, the DepEd, no? Department of Education. Sorry. So the classroom without toilet is seven by seven, classroom with toilet is seven by nine. So classrooms, two classrooms with seven by seven and two classrooms by seven by nine. So we have, uh, we have, they have different types of configuration like this one. So we have the design for three classrooms, seven by nine. We have uh, designs for four classrooms, eight classrooms, six classrooms, nine classrooms, and uh, 15 classrooms. So, so these are typical designs of uh, school buildings uh, created by the Department of uh, Education. Uh, this is a also a uh, school building uh, for Mimaropa, another storage building, a division office building in Sorsodon. So these are samples of uh, school buildings. This is a inauguration or a ribbon cutting of a school building by DepEd. Okay. And this is another school building by DepEd. No? Um, uh, these are school buildings by DepEd, as you can see. No? Uh, uh, high ceiling, large windows. No? Uh, regular room site, no? shapes of, of classrooms. No? Uh, another DepEd uh, school buildings with some uh, uh, cosmetic uh, designs. No? Another school buildings uh, designed uh, for the Department of Education with uh, columns and uh, pediments. No? Uh, an attempt to create it to be new classical. This one, another school buildings uh, by DepEd. Uh, I think this is a school building in somewhere in Metro Manila. No? Uh, Multi-story school building. Another DepEd school building. And uh, these are school buildings uh, uh, competition uh, uh, that was uh, uh, I think that was a bit about 10 years ago or five years ago. Uh, design competition for multi for a school building, uh, multi-functional walk-up building. These are uh, designs by architects. No? This is the second prize for the school building, and this is the grand prize no? or the uh, multi-D Lego school system designed by an architect. Uh, first prize, category B, division one, the Lego system. So emerging trends in K-12 schools, so we are, we are similar to the uh, kindergarten schools. There's also what you call existing technology, integrated uh, spaces and project rooms, specialized learning environment and multifunctional spaces. Uh, first and foremost, the students, even this group users, comprises multi subgroup in elementary school. Difference uh, between pre kindergarten, which is uh, four to five years old, or and second, third year graders, which is seven to eight years old, and the big guys, which is the fourth and fifth grader, which is nine to ten years old, all need to be considered. So nine to ten years old is the grade five to grade six, no? Uh, and administration and faculty rooms, parents, community at large, 
after all, most of communities in this, is, this is the constituent that ultimately, ultimately votes to fund the construction of a school. So the K-12 to basic educational program, we have what you call the grade kinder, the grade one, grade two, grade three. I think all of you have uh, 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 under, uh, uh, went to K-12, to no? most, of, most of you uh, went to K-12 to schools, no? and there is what you call the grade uh, 11 and 12, which was uh, uh, added. No? And uh, as you can see, the kindergarten, the primary education is six years, the junior high school is four years, and the senior high school is two years. No? The implementation of management of the K-12, the transition, uh, it will be fully implemented by uh, 2018. Uh, the first batch who learned who went to, to K-12 system will graduate in 2024, okay? So the whole program from grade one to grade 12 will be graduating on 2024. So uh, this is the transition uh, in private school. So, and the learning paradigm, how do kids learn? And the old paradigm is that uh, students uh, go to the classroom and they are taught to learn you know, by a teacher, okay? Uh, but now we have a diverse activity, diverse learning activities, you know? Right now we have different, the students are given different activities in order to learn, you know? Not just by learning from an a individual person, but the individual person guide them through other activities for them to learn. So that is why the classroom now are designed in a different way. You know? It's more interactive, it's more flexible, it has a lot of uh, uh, interactive materials like computers and others. And there are areas that the students can learn by themselves, which are called the pad areas. You know? And it's, it has interconnection with the outside environment and interconnection to the adjacent classrooms. So the different classroom shapes nowadays, they are, we have the cross, the L, rectangle, the square, and the T-shaped classrooms. No? We have the L-shaped classrooms, no? the socio-fugal, socio-petal classrooms. Uh, okay, and this, we have the activity settings. And these are the different uh, configuration of the L-shaped structures, you know, it has L-shaped rooms, the Lincoln Public School, Public Elementary School. Okay, these are the, actually the classroom is a square, but there is what you call a, a addition for uh, uh, collaboration areas or interactive areas or pad areas for each classroom and it's interconnected. All classrooms are interconnected. You know? So these are the uh, these are the new way on how to design uh, elementary schools. You know? So this is the case study by uh, the architectural partnership. You know? Okay, this is another high school, the Waverly NE you know? uh, High School by architectural partnership. As you can see, the the classroom are. Uh, shape you know, arranged in a way that it's not the ordinary classroom anymore. So it's it's uh, created into different pads you know, or different uh, tables. You know? So students can uh, interact with each other while learning. You know? So flexible learning areas. We have they have small group rooms. They have lounge furnitures for students and uh, uh, faculty members. We have the teachers resource room and conference areas for the teachers. You know? So these classrooms are dis de designed uh, differently from our standards. This is another type of classroom by the architectural partnership. You know? uh, different this, the, uh, application of this uh, typology. You know? uh, okay, so as you can see that the, uh, the, the classrooms are clustered you know, into maybe on by grade level or by uh, activity level. So this is the exterior of a uh, high school in the, in the, uh, in other countries. So this is the uh, flexible learning areas. This is the uh, computer sent computer areas for the students and uh, faculty rooms, the lockers of the students. 
Okay, so this is another config, uh, another design. So the learner-centered environment, the classroom should be flexible, changeable, allows multiple and diverse teaching and learning activities. No? And uh, uh, the 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 students should be should be able to move uh, uh, out of the classroom. Then there's what you call the cross-disciplinary learning, projects research-based learning, which is uh, the applied applied uh, uh, methodology of uh, uh, learning for students. No, what you learn in school, you need you apply it through uh, research or projects, and. Uh, uh, we also have what you call a, a beyond the walls environment, no? the greater school environment, the community based and the virtual environment. We are now learning using the virtual environment and uh, there are also uh, what you call elementary school which has the community based environment. So, so community based school learning methodology. Okay, so so moving out of the classroom, extending the learning environment we have what you call the breakout spaces or the collaboration areas or the common spaces. No? So these spaces are used by uh, students or by teachers no? uh, in creating a breakout communication, breakout uh, uh, classes outside the classroom. No? So that, that's what, that is what they call it, moving out of the classroom. No? So these are the breakout rooms no? where, where students can interact, they, they can hold classes on these class areas, no? And it's a different environment, no? Uh, so this is a, what you call a breakout collaboration area designs, no? By VCBO architecture. So these are collaboration areas, no? <clears throat> uh, tiered uh, seating areas, and these are um, areas that are very flexible okay, for students. So as you can see, these are the, uh, uh, collaboration area, so you can see these are collaboration area, and these are classrooms. No? So there are classrooms being held at the same time, and there are classrooms being held at the collaboration areas. So activities can be held outside the classrooms on collaboration areas, no? and these collaboration areas are also that the, these, these areas are also being used by students no, inside these classrooms. So, so there are times that students on these classrooms are holding classes or holding classes on these collaboration areas. So this is another example of a collaboration area for classrooms. No? Uh, and this is also another type of collaboration areas when there are when there are computers. No? Students can learn on computers no? or do the research outside the classrooms. Uh, while uh, on the break, or they can hold classes outside the classrooms. Uh, okay, so these are collaboration areas also. Okay. These are tables outside the classrooms no, for students for group uh, teaching or group uh, learning groups or collaboration groups. Okay, so as you can see in this design, no. So these are lecture and presentation rooms, and these are collaboration outside the, 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 the classrooms. So, so students can interact with each other from other classrooms, or teachers can hold classes outside the classroom if they want to, so that they can use the collaboration areas. Okay, so you can see you know, those are classrooms, so these are collaboration rooms. Those rooms with doors are classrooms. So this is another collaboration. This are another design of room in Arizona. So you can see that uh, these are collaboration areas outside the classrooms. These are the classrooms and these are collaboration areas. Uh, okay. So this is another option for science laboratories. No, uh, flexible science laboratories. As you can see that these are tables that can be moved. No. It can be moved inward, like this one. It can be moved into clusters, like this one. Or it can go back into its particular space, like this one, option number three. So this is a flexible science lab. These are also classrooms no? in Minneapolis. No? It's a, it's, there are collaboration rooms outside the classrooms. 
So the classrooms are not designed, 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 no, uh, 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 what you call it in a rigid form, no. Uh, it's a, it's a very uh, playful uh, uh, layout of uh, classrooms uh, in relation to collaboration areas. Okay, so. Okay, so this is also a a um, Portland, no, uh, Columbia, Columbia Community Campus. So these are the classrooms, and these are the collaboration areas, and these are the uh, administration or staff areas no, for the whole classroom, for the whole facility. So very high ceiling, large windows, no, um, uh, floorings that are not slippery. No? The finishes of the walls are, are inviting. The colors are are uh, subdued. No, the two loud colors. Okay, so these are the. As you can see, this this is the uh, Hillsborough, California, Nueva Hillside Learning Complex by Lady Maytum Stacy Architects. So these are the classrooms. As you can see, these are classrooms. This is the second floor of this classroom. So these are the classrooms on the ground floor. Okay. So there, there, there is what you call an open area, a, what you call a, uh, uh, an area where people, students can uh, interact with each other in the middle, like an open uh, play area for, for kindergarten. But this is, this is an elementary uh, middle school area, middle school, middle school uh, building. So this, this, maybe this is used for uh, um, uh, interaction space for students. This is the main ca cafeteria of the facility. And these are the uh, collaboration areas or the library, library of the school. No? The number three, this is the media center. And these are the number two are the research and development laboratories. And the number one is the administration. So administration, research and development, the main library and the media room. This number five is the kitchen and the dieta, the, the uh, cafeteria, and the upper floors are the classrooms. Okay, so as you can see, they they located the quiet area, which is the classrooms on the upper part, no? and they segregate the noisy area, which is the cafeteria, from the learning areas. So, okay. So these are samples of a uh, uh, site development plan done in SketchUp, no? Okay, so these are, this is a campus in a uh, uh, campus that we have developed in, uh, I think this is in uh, Coronadal, South Cotobato. I know, this is in Baler, Baler, no? Baler. This is in Baler, no? I will show you the development of this campus later on. This is a conceptual plan of a campus somewhere in uh, Mindanao. So that ends our uh, lecture.